Okay, so to start texturing, I'm just going to give you an overview of this scene. Now, I tend to make a lot of my materials in this scene because it means that they're consistent and the lighting is always going to be the same as I build them and then I'll be able to predict what they'll look like in a particular scene that I'm working in. Um, I don't always do it. Sometimes I'll work, for example, with the robot, I might work uh, creating the materials in that robot scene once it's lit and everything but I actually think this is probably a, a better way of doing this is more predictable now there's only real two, really two things that you need to worry about here and that's the outer base which is the object and then the outer ball and this is the, the these are the objects that will place the materials onto but I will just give you an overview of how the scenes built as well so I'm just gonna come into my layer browser here and I'm going to just unhide the scene elements Let's just move that out of the way again and you'll see that we've got as well as the the two parts of the ball for putting the materials on there's the inner ball which has a 50 percent gray material on it there's the base which is just what that ball is sitting on there's a sky object which has an hdr image on it which has a couple of soft boxes and a spotlight and a gradient uh, there's the grid which is the the kind of psych object here um, which just lets you kind of see scale a little bit better and it's also quite quite nice and neutral. Um, I have a spotlight here, which is also uh, uh, an HDRI, uh, which is a kind of a barn door type look. And then I have an SSS ring, which is uh, used for, this is a, a ring, let me just hide that outer ball. And I use this for working with uh, translucent materials, transparent materials and subsurface scattering, things like that. So if on the outer ball, I wanted to make a kind of a tinted glass or like I said, maybe a milky object or a, a translucent material, uh, maybe a kind of plastic, then that ring will just help me see through uh, what I'm doing and give me a sense of depth of that material. So I'm just going to hide these again. Um, and by the way, if you haven't used the layer browser before, what you can do is if you have, let's just add a cube to the scene. If you have an object in the scene, you can right click it and then you can go down to here, add to layer, and add to any of the existing ones, or add to a new layer. And then you'll see here, you have that new layer pop up, and you can double click the color to set a new color for it. And you can see that's replicated up here as well. Double click to rename it, so we could just call this, let's say, extras. And then you have a few other options. Now, the ones that I use most, are this one, which is for the, the manager, the object manager, the hierarchy, so if you click that so it grays out, you'll see that it disappears from the hierarchy. And it means that you can set up your scene and have all the different lights and objects and skies and things like that, but you don't have to worry about them in the object manager, not cluttering your workspace, and it just means you can work a bit more efficiently. You can also hide from the editor, like so, or from the renderer, like so. Um, you can lock them and a few other options as well. You can turn on and off deformers and things like that. Um, but the most useful is the hierarchy and the, the editor and renderer visibility settings. Anyway, I'm just going to delete that layer. I don't need it. Close the layer browser and delete that cube. Now, I've included this scene and all the materials in the assets folder on the disk uh, or on the download. So you can follow along making your materials in here. OK, so let's go on and make our first material. So double click down here in the, in the material manager and I'm just going to raise up my attributes manager here. Now, I don't know why, but I always tend to ignore the attributes manager when I'm working materials. I don't know why I do it, but I do. I always end up double clicking them and working in their own window. Now, I really don't know why that is. It's just a, a bad habit probably because it's just a, another couple of button clicks which I could ignore. So bear with me if I'm doing that here. Uh, feel free to do everything. You can replicate all of the same things all over here. And the first one we'll do is the, let's call this bot plastic shell. And this is going to be the main texture for the kind of the head, the body, all the plastic casing parts. So, which in this case is actually most of him. And I'm going to start by turning off specular and I'm going to work my way through the different channels that I want. Um, we'll start with color. Now, what I want for the color is a kind of a creamy color, uh, but I'm going for that sort of. Uh, you see it on some car paints where, depending on the angle that the light is hitting it, it might be a slightly different colour. And I want it to be a slightly kind of more orangey or 
uh, maybe a slightly more salmony color uh, as it falls off towards the edges. So let's set our main color first. Now, just a note on color picker, you can use the sliders here to change your colors. Uh, you can type in numbers um, or you can choose different ways of uh, choosing your colors depending on how you're used to working and also whether you're gonna be um, using a Mac or a PC because you can also click in the color window there uh, which will bring up a very similar color picker um, or you can click in here which will bring up the Mac one. Now I'm not sure if this does this on a PC for a PC color picker or not but that's just clicking in there uh, and I quite like the, the Mac color picker so I'm just going to go for a kind of a creamy beige color quite pale like so just click off there and we'll see that's hit here and you can also see the the values also put into there so this is our first main color I'm also going to go into the texture drop down here and add a Fresnel shader and the Fresnel is basically the top of this gradient is what is facing directly towards the camera lens and the white is what is 90 degrees to the lens so anything kind of between this point here which will be the black fading off to the white which will be at the edge and this we're going to use most people would use this for reflections and we'll use that for some reflections as well but it's also quite used for doing kind of colored fall off so click the name for Nell to open up the gradient and I'm just going to choose kind of a similar creamy color for the front oh that's for the, for the side that should be for the front so there so you can see now we've got this cream in the middle and we want it to fall off to something slightly richer and maybe a touch more salmony like so you can actually you can go a bit more mad with this color you can make it a bit richer than you'd really want to because I'm going to go back up to the main color settings and I'm just going to reduce the strength of this until it looks about right. I don't want it too overpowering. And don't forget you can play with the mix mode as well and they work in a similar way to Photoshop. Um, so you can just play around with these, subtract or multiply or add, but I think normal is fine. I'm just going to play with the mix strength. I think probably about 42 is right. Now, I'm going to drop this material, let me just move the editor out of the way, straight onto my outer ball. I'm also going to put it onto the outer base as well, uh, because we're going to have most of the, the robot is going to be using this texture. So to, we want to see how it reacts to itself as well on a different object close by. Okay, so I'm going to just render this out, and I'll just render region. I don't need to render the whole thing. Now the scene as default is set up with reasonably high render settings so it might take just a couple of minutes depending on your system it might just take uh, you know a few seconds uh, but it is well worth it while working with materials to render out decent quality with decent anti-aliasing and decent GI settings uh, just so you can then move more swiftly with the actual creation of your material. So there we have it and you can see I think this is possibly a little bit too strong for the front facing parts but you can see we are getting a nice bit of fall off color at the edges which works quite well so what I need to do I think is possibly reduce or increase the, the, the not the brightness so much but the, make the the front facing color just a, a little a little whiter so I'm just going to raise that up in there I don't want it quite white and that's one thing to bear in mind as well um, when you're using the color picker I would suggest never using 100% white or 100% black because it very rarely happens in fact I don't think 100% black can happen I think that's a, a physical impossibility or very close to it um, unless you're in some kind of scientific lab so just to try to keep slightly off white and very slightly grey uh, if you want to because um, I think that will help the quality of your renders so let's just re-render just a smaller section and just see what our front facing part looks like now so I'll give this a few seconds to render out uh, I think once we've got some specular working and a bit of reflection I think that'll actually look quite good so I'm happy with the color channel for now 
Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to uh, the specular here and I'm going to keep it on plastic mode and I'm going to increase the height probably to about 65%. I am also going to increase the fall off just to flatten off the top of the this, this arc here replicates this spot so we'll get a nice kind of if we increase the fall off we get a nice kind of flat highlight which will pick up there you can also add some inner weight which will kind of increase the the sharpness between the the, the highlight and the less highlighted part and you can change the overall with the width here um, I think probably about 53% looks quite good uh, and this is good for picking up edges and just for generally kind of like if you've got nice filleted and beveled edges which we've got a lot of on this robot and uh, then that will really help to just kind of make things sparkle and I like to add a bit of diffusion in post which we'll talk about later as well and having these kind of really sharp bright hot highlights um, works really nicely with diffusion so we'll now see these start to pop out hopefully around this edge here we'll probably see one over here as well okay so you can see this this edge here it's not overly bright which is good we don't want it too bright we don't want it to be overexposed and you can see here it's just getting to the point of of being overexposed but not quite and that's what we want okay so now that part's done we can move on to our reflection and we want a very small amount of reflection so i'm going to put kind of three percent overall there i'm also going to add a fresnel shader and i'm going to knock the mix down to possibly i was going to say 12 or 13 percent we'll try that and see what it looks like and i'm happy using this default gradient here because it works well for reflections i'm also going to turn up blurriness and i'm going to put this at 12 percent but i'm going to increase the minimum samples to 10 otherwise it can appear a little bit grainy which we don't want okay so let's render this one again now you're going to find during the texturing that I do quite a lot of test renders um, and I do keep the quality high just because there's no point in not doing that but this is where the material really starts to come alive and you'll start to see some reflections even with the GI pass you can see the start of some reflections here you can see the barn door spotlight which is to the top left there uh, just appearing and you can see this line here which is kind of the reflection of this grid on the floor and this is really going to help to sell this as a material now I will just a word of warning turning on blur blurriness in your materials does increase the render time quite a lot so if it's not vitally important to you then turn it off and it will save you a lot of time but it will help the material look right and you can see now you can see that the spotlight is being reflected there and there's another light just being reflected up the top here and you can see that above the the, the whole scene there's a light which is just catching here and here um, and there's a bit of reflection of the ball in the base and vice versa and you can see there's some really nice little points just kind of starting to look good now the final thing I want to do for this plastic casing is I'm going to actually there's two more things I might do to it I'm going to add a slight amount of bump so I'll do that first of all and I'm going to go into a uh, noise open up the noise and if I bring this out you can choose a different type of noise either by name here or you can click the little down arrow and this gives you a visual rep representation and I want to pick one that is reasonably subtle and just make a little bit of surface texture for the the plastic so I think I'm going to go for this sparse convolution because it's nice and subtle uh, and it's nice and soft as well I'm also going to reduce the contrast and make that maybe even a little bit less than that okay so I put this to minus 71% I'm also going to reduce the global scale to I'll try about five percent and this will add just a fine texture to the material and I'm also going to decrease the strength of that to we'll try seven percent now so you don't have to sit through tons of renders 
um, I'll just render this out and pause while I render. So the render's finished and you can see that the bump is, is just helping to add just a slight roughness to the surface and also you can see around the edges of some of the highlights it's just starting to break up in quite a nice way. Now that render actually took you know two and a half minutes so I'm wondering if the blurry reflections are actually necessary so I'm going to turn them off. Oops. I'm going to turn the blurry reflections off put them back to zero and I'm just going to do that render again just to see how much difference we actually get from it and see how much quicker the, the render will be without the blurry reflections and already the pre-pass is looking a lot quicker uh, and that is something to work out and also if you're not going to be getting up close uh, in your final renders then you might not need it it all depends on the actual final scene um, so we'll, we'll hope for the best here and hopefully the bump will help just kind of how it was breaking up the edge of the reflection there uh, that should kind of give us enough anyway so this is something to bear in mind as, uh, as you're working with materials as well okay so the pre-pass is getting there it's uh, we're coming up to 40 seconds now uh, probably still a little bit too long but we've got reflections on we've got GI on at high settings um, anti-aliasing is set quite high this is kind of a, a top level render um, I'm using IR and QMC rendering here and all the GI settings are cranked up uh, just for making the materials uh, but I've got high hopes and I think this this final render here will be the one that we'll use and then we can save out our material and I'm just going to show you how I tend to save my materials as well um, I won't do it just yet because it will stop the render um, because I'm just rendering in the viewport if I go and hit any buttons or any tools or any other windows in the cinema then it will halt this window which I really don't want to happen so we'll just give it a little longer and we're getting there now and we're also going to talk about stacked materials because what I want to do is also show you how to make a, a decal or a sticker for the robot um, for my personal version I've got a, kind of a, a sticker on his chest which is kind of worn so we'll look at making a Photoshop document with the, a color channel for the actual sticker and then an alpha channel uh, which we can use to apply the sticker and that will act as kind of making the, the, the worn edges and stuff as well. And we'll look at that in just a minute. But for now, okay, so we've got this bumpy texture and I think actually I'm thinking that the, uh, the reflections might, might actually need to stay. The blurry reflections this is just a little too rough now let's go back to our bump that's because the i did control control z just a bit too far i want this to be five percent and my global scale should be ten percent okay so i'm just gonna i'll pause again while i just check to make sure that, that was right okay so the render's done and changing back my bump channel uh, reducing the, the strength of the bump and increasing the global scale back up to 10% that's worked a treat and you've still got the break up around the edges of the some of the hot spots uh, and there's a slight texture to the surface it's not quite too glossy so that's looking good so what we can do is before I just save this material I'm going to actually just open it up and if you right click on the thumbnail image up here you'll see there's a few different options actually if I lift this up you might be able to see all of them almost the, the last one at the bottom there is scene settings which you can ignore for now um, what I tend to do is when I'm working with the material if there's a particular object that I know I'm going to place it onto I will tend to kind of replicate that in here and you've got a choice of all these different shapes and I think rounded cube is going to replicate what we've got mostly it doesn't look quite as pretty there but so it might be worth just having a look at some of the others uh, cylinder might work well um, or even a double torus just because you get all the different uh, different kind of angles then to the lighting so it takes a little bit longer to update but you can see here I think the double torus is one of my favorites it's quite a useful one so we've got the preview there we can close this down and now we can go select it in the material manager go to file and then just off camera here you've got save material as so I'm going to save my material as and I'm going to go to my making it look great folder 
materials and I'm going to save this as dot plastic shell I think I called it so plastic shell and we'll call this the base as, as well because we might add some extra layers on top and we'll talk this is when I say layers I don't mean layers is in the layer shader so I just save that um, because there is a shader in here called the layer shader where you can kind of stack different kinds of shaders on top of each other that's not quite what I mean I mean more stacked materials so um, I could add a new material here with the sticker on it and I could apply that to the same object but that wouldn't be a layered material that would be a stacked material and if you come up to display in your viewport and make sure that stacked materials is checked then you'll get kind of a a predictable idea of what's going on um, I'll just do it so I can show you what I mean uh, let's uh, we'll keep just uh, let's say a bright red and in alpha we'll just add an alpha channel which has got some noise in it um, and we'll increase the scale just so you can see the effect of what I'm talking about and I'll increase the contrast so you can see through it now if I now drop this onto the outer ball Actually, before I do that, I'll turn off stacked materials because that's not on as default. I'm just going to drop that on there, and you can see what's happened. It's cut away where the alpha is uh, cutting away, which is fine. That's what we want, uh, but it's not showing us the the rest of the cream and the rest of that object in the the viewport. But if you come down and check stacked materials then you can see what we're going. So if we were trying to apply a sticker to this object, we'd really want to be able to see the base material under there as well. And that's the option you use to do it. So I'll just delete that. And I'm going to open up my content browser. Uh, and what I have is at my top level of my content browser, I have a few different things that I've stored as favorites. So I've got some Cinema 4D materials here, some Maxwell materials and various things going on there but in my making it look great folder I've got my materials and sometimes you need to come out with this just to make it refresh properly it doesn't always do it straight away okay so we've got the bot plastic shell base and at the moment it's just showing this blank scene but from the name we know what we're doing what we can do is we could do a render of this save that out as a file and you could choose uh, to create preview or set a preview uh, and that lets you just use that render as a preview for this image um, which we don't need to do but if you use the content browser like I do quite a lot then it's uh, worth doing okay so we've got our first material applied and that's all ready to go we'll leave it here for now that's not a problem um, but we can now move on to the next one and the next one we will do will be let's do the metal parts so things like the joints of the neck and the elbows and shoulder joints now I want to have a kind of quite a stylized looking metal here so I'm going to go for something which is slightly blue quite bright that sort of a color I'm also going to add a lot of reflection um, probably around the 80 to 85 percent I'm also going to add a Fresnel shader which I will mix down to let's have a look down to let's just say 50 percent to keep it round um, I'm going to add a bump but it's going to be big and I'll add a noise and I'm going to increase the scale up to a thousand and this will just add some slight very very slight waves to the surface um, which will help to kind of warp a few reflections and just kind of get some spark in them uh, and I'll take this down to let's say 10% okay so we can now we don't need this material anymore because we've got it saved so what I can do is I can click an option drag onto the, pre, the, uh, the, the plastic material and that will automatically swap them over you can see it's updated here on the, the texture tag and over here so I can now just do our first test render just to see how we're looking, if the colours are kind of looking right. This shouldn't take too long. It is reflective, but uh, it's not too reflective. You can already see some nice bright spots. Uh, you can see 
here is going to be a nice bright spot and there's also going to be some on the base here they're going to be kind of really nice hot spots because even though this is showing an image that image is actually a, a luminous material that it's reflecting and um, so when the actual render pass the beauty pass goes down you'll see that become the, the hot spot the same as it was on the plastic material uh, you should also see some nice reflections of the grid and where you might imagine that all the grid lines would be kind of perfectly wrapped around the sphere because it's a nice reflection. They're actually a little bit warped because of the, the bump map that I applied. And you can see the reflections of the HDR being shown there. Um, I think it might be just a, a touch too bright. Um, I'm also going to reduce the scale of that bump. I think a thousand might be just a bit too much. So let's try 700. Uh, and go back into the colour and I'm going to reduce this down still keeping a touch of blue in there but it's uh, nearer the 50% grey mark with a touch of blue in so we'll do the same again I'll just render that out and I'll pause while I render okay so the render's now finished and although it does look better I might just experiment a little bit um, and try doing this with a really dark base colour like so like a kind of black chrome so I'll do this once and then I also uh, I might just try it with some blurry reflections as well just to see how it looks. So just render this one out again for you. I'm actually really liking this kind of dark reflective material. I think it works quite well. Um, but we will just, as I said, go into the reflection. Here you go. Look, I use the attributes manager this time. Uh, go into the reflection and I'll turn up blurriness to, let's say, 12% and up the minimum sample so it's not look too gritty and we'll just render this out again and see how it looks we may not need it uh, but we may so it may just really sell sell the material although we're not getting all that close so it might not be necessary but i think it's always worth checking now i know all the settings i used in my version of the model and i would usually work a lot quicker here when i'm building a material but i think it's worth showing you a few steps and showing that it's worth experimenting until you really get used to what you're kind of going to achieve by using various settings so you might have seen me go well a thousand percent for a bump channel um how did i decide to use a thousand percent well just from experience is the answer um i've actually chosen to tone it down a, a touch here um and while i'm talking about things like the scale using a thousand percent that's actually um you need to bear in mind the scale of your scene as well Okay, these blurry reflections, just before I just talk about scene scale. They look nice, but I don't think they're all that necessary. So I'm just, even though this render's not finished yet, I'm just going to stop it by hitting the reflection tab there again and reduce them back to zero. Okay, so yeah, scene scale. Although the size of this outer ball or, or whatever, it's it might have a, a measurement in centimeters or meters depending on how you set your preferences that's kind of a bit of an arbitrary number um, but it's also kind of not and it's worth checking when you open a material up um, for example the noise shader you're looking at the texture space here um, you can also go into your UV or your object or world um, and I would say object is one of the easier ways of judging what you're doing so that's 700% of the object space. So in this instance, the, you know, the object is from here to here, and this is a 200 centimeter sphere. So you're looking at 700% of 200 centimeters. And that's just something to bear in mind when you're trying to work out what you should set your scales to, uh, or whether you use um, the relative scale here, because you could have, if I could put in 2000 in the Y axis, you'll get a nice kind of stretched uh, texture here which is good if we went down and put in say 5% in there you can see you could get a nice brushed metal effect which I don't want to do so I'm just going to change that back again um, but that's how you would do it and it's easier to do that sort of thing in object space okay so we've got metal done let's just call this black chrome and I'll also save that so file save material as and we'll call this black chrome and make sure it's in with the other materials all the materials that i'm creating here you should find in the materials folder as well i'll include them all for you 
Um, so if you're not all that bothered about learning materials or you just want to skip this step and get on to doing some pretty renders, then they're all there for you. You don't need to worry about following this part. However, I would suggest you do just so you can learn maybe something that you haven't already known or if you're a texture master, just skip it all over. Um, but it's there if you need it. OK, so let's just think about what other materials we're going to need. We know that we're going to have one for the eye and I'm going to create that in After Effects first. So we'll go through some After Effects creating that channel and that's going to be in the luminosity channel and in the uh, color channel. There won't be any reflection on that because we'll use the actual glass dome of the eye for the reflections. Uh, but we do need to do the heart. So the clamps will probably be using this black chrome texture. But let's double click and create a, a new material now I'm going to for this I'm just going to set a base for myself which is going to be this kind of slightly yellowish green quite bright um, but I'm going to add a layer shader now the layer shader lets me stack shaders on top of each other or images or effects or whatever but I'm going to start with a shader and I'm going to use a gradient so I'm going to open up the gradient by double clicking the gradient icon and I'm going to change it to 2d v because I want it going upwards and I'm going to add a very similar green here and over here I'm going to add a slightly limey yellowy green might make this one slightly darker like so maybe even darker still actually let's bring it right down okay and what I want to do is have kind of a swirly slightly noisy look and this channel is going to be copied over into the luminance channel as well and I might even add just a touch of glow I will also add some reflection to it as well just because it's going to be a kind of a shiny canister as you can see in the turntable movie and some of the, the, the other renders that you might have seen of the robot. So to get the kind of broken up waviness going on in here I'm going to increase the turbulence and I'm going to try let's try 25% and see how it looks. Now that's pretty good straight off the bat I think that's kind of the look I'm, I'm looking for something kind of with a bit of turmoil and organicness to it. Now you can change the scale of this, uh, that's probably, probably a bit too small, let's take it back down just a notch, that looks good, I like the look of this. So this will be stretched along, this, this will be the bottom edge of the battery or the heart and this will be the top edge, so this will kind of be how it's looking. Um, changing the, the frequency, you can just change this we can ramp this right up you're not seeing a lot of difference and that's more down to if you're animating the frequency would be more use, usable or more obvious but we're not animating this, this texture um, although we could and if the heart was going to be seen uh, in a, an animated capacity then you might want to add some kind of movement to this texture and you would do that by keyframing your your frequency here um, or changing your seed you could animate the seed and what this does is just kind of randomizes that noise within as you can see each time I change the seed the noise is changing the turbulence is changing so I'm just clicking through until I see one that just kind of grabs me and says well I like the look of that and I like this one I don't know why I just do you can also change the angle of this so it would wrap around in different ways um, and you can see that because it's using the, the height information here, we've got solid green and a, and a solid lime up here, uh, which I don't really want. So I'm just going to go to zero. So I'm going to go back up to here and I'm also going to add another shader. And I want to use, uh, I want to use a, a Fresnel shader on here just to give some fall off to the back. And I'm going to make this a slightly blue fall off. So go up to Fresnel and I'm going to open this up and I want my back edge to be a kind of a, a not quite a turquoise, slightly more blue than a turquoise but something quite strong and electric um, and then this can go back to, in fact we can leave that at black because I want this to be quite a small effect because what I'm going to do using that black is I can change the blending mode 
So I can go to multiply, which will be the wrong way around. As you can see, this is only showing the blue areas. But if I put on this onto screen, then you can see that although it's covering up a little bit of this, um, the green at the bottom here, in the actual model it won't because we're going from green bottom to top where the lime is and then the blue fall off at the back. Uh, although I'm going to just decrease the strength of it just a touch. I don't want it to be too overpowering. I might even try overlay just to see how it looks. No, let's stick with screen. Okay, so that's how the um, layer shader works. Uh, we'll add a little bit of reflection as well, and not too much, just enough to give it some sparkle. And again, Fresnel shader. The Fresnel shader just really helps reflections look good. Just because of the way light works, if you're looking directly at something um, and the light's bouncing through it, you're less likely to see the reflection in the surface of that object than you would at glancing angles. So that's um, let's just try a few here now if your icon up here your preview your thumbnail was just a bit too slow you can always make it bigger like so and you just right click on the icon and choose a new size so i'm thinking this looks all right uh, it's not perfect yet and i might go back to the layer shader and i might just play with that but i'm going to knock that back up to full strength again that blue around the edge the blue fall off and I'm also going to go into Glow. Now this is using the material colour, but it's way too strong. Inner strength I'm going to set to about 15%, outer to about 25%. Um, randomness I'm going to make 50% because I want something slightly organic to this. I'm just going to increase actually that outer strength to 50. Uh, use material colour is fine. Let's go into the specular and give this a quite a sharp specular highlight, like so. Okay, so now we can just click on the material, hover over the black chrome because we've saved that, we don't need it anymore. Hold down the option key, let go, and we can now render this away. Now what I'm also going to do in a minute, once I'm happy with this basic basic material I'm going to copy the color channel into the luminance channel because I want this to be a, a light emitting material and if you've seen the turntable then you might have noticed that the, the kind of the cavity that the heart sits in uh, was kind of glowing softly and that was actually because of this luminant material but I won't do that yet and when I do render it out I'll um, turn off the lights so you can see how it looks uh, with the, the the kind of the battery material itself being the only illumination in the scene. Okay, I quite like this. Now the scale of the the um, turbulence in the gradient might not be quite right, but we'll we'll have a look at that in a second. I'm I'm not convinced either way. When it's actually applied to a heart, I think this might look quite good. I like really like the way it picks up the reflections of that spotlight as well. That looks quite nice. Okay, so what I need to do is just go to window open my layer browser and bring back my scene objects and I'm going to turn off my spotlight and hide it from the renderer and my sky hide that from the renderer um, and that should do it I'll just move that out of the way for now and now if I render this again you'll see oh I need just I just need to uh, copy that over to the luminance tank type. So come to the color channel, uh, next to texture here, just go to the drop down, copy channel, turn on luminance, and same again, paste channel. And this is now a luminant material using the same shaders, the same layer shaders to drive the colors of the, the luminance. So now I can do it, and I'll just go a little bit further down so you can see if it's lighting the floor as you want, because you might want to increase the luminance values. So you can already see that the scene is much darker than it was and that's because there's no HDR or lights in the scene anymore lighting it. All the lighting in this render is coming purely from this one material. And you can already see how some of this lighting is falling and where the strength of it is and where it's going to kind of really kind of pop. And then
there you have it. So luminant material, and you can see that with the GI settings all turned on properly, it, it has a nice fall off, and you can see that closer to the object is much more strongly lit, and the colors are looking good. I like the blue fall off, that works quite well. It gives that kind of hint of electrical power to it but the soft greens are more natural and slightly more, well not human, but slightly more kind of organic and that's the, the look that I was going for. So I'm gonna rename this to the heart and also just get to file, save material as, and we'll call this the heart. And when it comes to just built-in Cinema 4D materials, I think we're pretty much done. I'm just going to turn back on the spotlight and the sky. Um, I will hide those from the hierarchy again. Uh, I don't want to see the scene elements anymore. So they're all gone and they're turned back on again. So I'll do one final render now which will have all the lights on and that luminant material just to check that it looks good when it's all lit. And if that's all fine then we can move on. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, we've still got some nice reflections there. The lighting is good. Now, don't forget that in the actual scene, this will be in a cavity, so it won't be quite so lit from external light sources. It will be more self-illuminated, uh, which is good. Um, so we can now move on. And in the next video, we're going to look at creating the eye uh, material in After Effects. So I will see you there.